Can you remember a moment when you realised the power of your voice and the guitar together? Uh, no, not really, to be honest. I mean, I had a... I used to play guitar since I was like eight. Um, didn't really sing, didn't like sing. It's not that I didn't like not sing, but I just didn't like it. I thought I wanted to be like a lead guitarist in a band, but I uh, started singing when I was, I was 11. And um, I thought, oh, no bad, you know. I'd rather do this, probably easier than making a living, just re- rely on myself rather than a band and stuff. And I thought, oh, we'll go for it. And then started writing tunes and thought, oh, yeah, this could, this could work for us. You remember the first song you wrote where that kind of felt like it was starting to click? Oh, I, um, one of my tunes, Don't, it's the self title of my album, but I wrote that kind of on a, I wrote it on a piano first, it became this big band tune, but I wrote that and like, uh, there's a few tunes like that, well, there's some I'll, f- I'll start in like May and end in October or whatever, but that one came to me in like 10 minutes, you know, you get a lot of tunes like that where you feel like it's just, it was in your head, you just needed to get it done on paper and the tune was already there before you wrote it and uh, I, I think that was the uh, that was the moment I thought you know that songwriting thing's quite good because before that I was just doing covers and stuff. So, yeah. What did you learn from covering other people's songs? Did you kind of look at the structure of them and stuff? I did. I um, a lot of inspiration from stuff like that. Even well, old bands like you know my favourite band, the Beatles and stuff. Just a lot of that stuff where people can be. A lot of structures are verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then I listen to bands like Radiohead or something where it's different, and I quite like that about tunes where structures are different than that. And it's not as like that my tunes sound like people, but you can be inspired by people to kind of write with the same mentality or the structures that they do. And um, I have a bit of fun with that. Yeah, it's almost like taking what they do and taking it into your sound. Aye, exactly. Um, I say this to a lot of people. And they think, oh, you don't sound like the band, but it's not about that. It's about taking the idea, like not even ideas, just things that they've done that you quite like and making it your own. But not exa- not necessarily just the sound, just the idea and stuff. You know. Yeah. You were the youngest ever musician to sell out tats. Mm. Talk me through that moment when you find that that news. I think that's probably the proudest that I've been of my music career so far, because uh, Tut's legendary in it, it's got a lot of big names behind it and stuff, and I've been in to see bands a good few times, played there no long ago, didn't have any support, but uh, I've been buzzing for it, it's been rescheduled a couple of times and stuff, but no, so I was, um, I think it was under, it was under a day it sold out, so I was just, no, I was, it was one of those ones where you're kind of refreshing it, but uh, no, I was sitting on the couch, I think it was like 10 or 11 in the morning and I just, I actually got a text from my auntie or something and then um, it wasn't me, and they were like, oh, it's sold out and then I went and checked so I was like, so good. So they sat before you did? Aye, because I, I was refreshing it and that, but I thought, oh, I'll get a wee break, you know, because it's driving me mental. I just wanted to, because... Dundee went up before it and that sold it and sort of at the same time but I thought oh touch was important one of I get that. I wasn't even thinking I was gonna sell it out, to be honest. I didn't think I was gonna sell it. Out. It was just wanting to see how many tickets you've done and stuff and then um, see if it was going well and then they said it sold it. I was like no, oh, set me up for that day, you know. You supported the snatch there, right? Yeah, I have supported them I supported them two thousand nineteen September in the Motherwell Civic and that's what I was talking about. I'd done a support for them March the 13th of 2020 in King Tuts. That was for their EP launch. Um, that's the same day my album was released and only like a week or two before the first lockdown happened. So it was one of the last, it was the last gig I'd done. It's interesting, you know, we were talking about the start of this, how you would look at other people's records and other bands and kind of look at them structurally and unpack mm. them and learn from them. Can you do the same thing when you're watching a band like that live that you're supporting? It's, well, actually, I should have said that. It's probably more so that way, I think, um, than listening to tunes because I love live music. Like, I say, even when I'm in the studio, I enjoy making music, but just playing live is a different, it's a different beast, I think. And I prefer to... Well, I do like listening to music, obviously. I listen to it every minute, every day, but going to see a band that you either know or discover a new band is... Discovering a new band's probably one of my favourite things because they could be your new favourite band and I'd take stuff for that like um, I don't really don't really know an example but 
again, not even just the sound, just the way they've done things like, say they've added a wee bit onto a tune that's a wee bit different for the live version, I think, oh, there's this wee cool bit that I've never made it onto the record, but I can do it live because live's just a different game. So, I think I do it aye, because my whole thing is the live music, that's what I concentrate on more, so I think it's more so that way, yeah. Over the last few years, do you think your progression as a live performer, your progression as a songwriter has been greater? Uh, uh, um, I don't know, I'm starting to... The songwriting's getting... I like it, I like the way it's going. I like that it's... it's get, I play with a band sometimes now for my headline shows and stuff, it's not just um, the big gigs, but... I think... I'm not sure because I've always liked playing in front of crowds and... You know, yeah, anybody can get a crowd going with a couple of covers, but... It's good to get them singing along and going to your tunes. You know, and Don't was like that when I said about 10 minutes, it was one of the first ones I really wrote and thought, well, that's a, it's a decent tune for me, you know. Uh, but the writing has come on, the writing has definitely come on because the words like it, the vocabulary's growing and using different stuff and the actual musician side of it, like I'm growing in the guitar and that obviously since I was eight, but I don't know because it's but it's, they both come into one you know guitar playing comes into songwriting and live playing stuff like that so no no sure it's right. quite interesting too the what you were saying there about how you're bringing you know the full band into it now yeah because your last thing I mean pray that's a good example of that is it almost uh, like taking things that you learn in the live space and bringing it then into the studio as well as when you're it on is stage? I, but it's just the songs have potential to be a a nice big band tune where. Well, that's mainly the music I listen to anyways, like indie rock, stuff like that. So I thought, well, I like, I like it, so why not make it? Because it's kind of, you know, it's a lot of, there's not much bands like that. And Well, there is a lot, obviously, but it's become more pop and I kind of like it. To, and if I'm thinking, no, oh, I wish there was like, more rock bands about in that, then I think, well, I'll make some rocky tunes myself. And, um, but no, I bring the full band into it. And because you can just, there's potential to make it big in the studio, why wouldn't you? Then, and you want to make them sound similar to the thing people are listening to in the house when they come to see you at a gig, so. Yeah. yeah. You're saying there as well, you know, that you might be listening to rock one day and you kind of want to incorporate a bit of that and you listen to pop and you want to bring that in. A hundred percent. Like, I, I think I've, I've got a massively broad music taste as well, like rap, then metal, then and then electronic, call that funk, which there's a wee bit of funk and blows in, pre. Yeah, definitely, with the guitar. Like, exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, that's what I mean, I'm bringing, and then I've got a few slow, folky melodies, like I was really into Bob Dylan and Jake Bug, and wrote a tune called Struck, which is harmonica, and obviously, and um, just a kind of wee skiffle Jake Bug sort of thing, and, uh, but I pray that's like, that is kind of, a guitar tune with a funky sort of beat and rhythm on the guitar so I've definitely took stuff from that and put it in that just an example of that though. How clear an idea do you have of where the project is going to be musically into like six months time a year's time? Um, well, the, the plan is I mean I know it's a pretty broad plan but just to keep growing in it because the gigs are I'm taking all the gigs you know, and festivals and just hoping to get further on the bill and Obviously I hope that I do well in charts and stuff with future albums, EPs and singles, but for me I think it's about the live, the live music, I just want to progress and get further up the bills of stages and headlines and festivals. Yeah, thanks very much man. Thank you, cheers. <laughs>